Welcome to a chilly 30 degree night in Bowling Green, Kentucky, but it is warm and exciting here as the fans are filling in to EA Diddle Arena. We're going to have a good one tonight with the Hilltoppers from Western Kentucky hosting the UTSA Roadrunners. This series, guys, has been so good. UTSA has won the last two, but Western Kentucky has won the last two here at home. So can they continue this road advantage at home today? It's going to be a fun one, guys, and we want to hear from you. We want you to comment. You already found the link if you're already watching us now, so good job there. But ask us questions. Give us comments. Give us ideas. And if you're an alum, we want to hear some of the best places here in Bowling Green, and we're going to tell you our thoughts. So with further ado, let's talk about Instagram. We also need to hear hashtag. Where are you watching? Who are you watching with? You just got to use the hashtag UTSA versus WKU. That's UTSA vs WKU. We're going to show some of your pictures. I know you WKU fans have a lot of dog pictures that you like to share on Instagram, so send them our way. Without further ado now, let's go to Noah Kozlov and Tim Scarborough, my partners in crime, guys. Uh, dog photos, that's, that's what we're here for on the stadium basketball game. Thanks, Olivia. Noah Kozlov and former Liberty star Tim Scarborough. So, for Western Kentucky, how do you keep the focus and, and the motivation at this point in the season about midway through Conference USA play? Well, I think this is where you start to ramp up your energy and your effort because they've had a few losses that were head-scratching losses, but there's still a lot to play for. They're home. They have some tough games coming up, but if they can be on the winning side of those games, they can start feeling a little bit better about themselves and this program, but it should be interesting tonight because UTSA is a really good opponent. Right, so there's one thing we know about Western Kentucky, Tim, is that it's never over at halftime because it's the, never the team's over. impossible to figure it out, and, and Rick Stansberry can't figure it out either, so we'll try to figure it out over 40 minutes of basketball. But UTSA, it's my first time calling one of their games this season. They're just so much fun to watch. They are, and they're an explosive team. They have a couple of guards that together are one of the most potent uh, weapons in the whole nation. And we'll see that on display tonight. And it should be very interesting because this crowd is going to be into this game because they understand that UTSA is a really good team that is capable of coming here and stealing a win. So I can't wait. And we'll get into Jackson and Wallace, the comeback that made national headlines and went viral. A comeback that made viral from Conference USA on Saturday against ODU. We'll talk about win probability. We'll talk about it all coming up in just a few moments. We've got Conference USA basketball for you tonight from Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's Western Kentucky and UTSA. And we'll be following UTSA as we'll head up to Marshall after this one to take in their game on Saturday. For now, let's... Take in the national anthem, and we'll be back with more after this. Presenting the colors for today's game is the WKU Army ROTC. Let us rise and stay standing for the color guard and the singing of our national anthem, performed tonight by Joel Geyer and Son.
best thing you've seen today. USA Basketball tonight in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's Western Kentucky, the preseason number one in Conference USA. They come in at four and four against UTSA, the Roadrunners at six and two in a three-way tie for the top spot in CUSA. And we could have some movement tonight with Western Kentucky and UTSA also. North Texas taking on Old Dominion. And welcome courtside here at EA Diddle Arena. Noah Kozlov, the former Liberty star, Tim Scarborough. Olivia Decker here with us as well. And it's for, let's start with UTSA. And they're coming off that emotional win. So how do you make sure you come down and make sure you play solid basketball? Well, you can't think about that. You have another game to play. And it has to feel great knowing that no matter what the odds are, you have a couple of guys who can get you over the hump and perhaps bring you back to victory. But you can't rely on that every night. You need to come out, get a good start. You're on the road. You have two of the toughest games in Conference USA coming up. This is probably the toughest road trip, coming here and then going to Marshall. You want to at least get a split, so you try to get that first one right away, and they have the players to do it. All right, we'll talk about what happens when you have a 99.9% .9 chance of losing in just a bit. But they've got <laughs> Western Kentucky tonight. Tavion Hollingsworth, really good sophomore, but not shooting the ball so well as of late. Yeah, but you know, he reduces your chances of winning when you come into this building because he is a dynamic player, gifted, has the ability to take over a game. His running jump shots, his array of moves that he puts on display night in and night out, he's an exceptional player. His mid-range game is as good as anybody in the country. And then he has a big fella in the middle that, quite frankly, tries to dominate at both ends. Rich Stansberry looks to get this young man, Charles Bassey, the ball early and often with good reason. He delivers 16 points a game. He gets himself to the free throw line. He will send it home when he catches great hands, great feet, and understanding he's just a freshman, a huge NBA prospect, a real luxury to have him in the paint. All right, so let's get into that crazy comeback for UTSA on Saturday. We'll show you all the numbers. Down 17 at home against ODU with 3.30 to go. And this is just remarkable. You look at the top line. They had a 99.9% .9 chance of losing that game, trailing by 17 with 3.10 to play. Then you look as that graphic goes down, their chances increase, but not by much. If you look down at that near bottom line, they lead 74, 73, or 15 seconds left. They outscore ODU 22 to 4 in just three minutes of play. So that tells you how explosive this team can be. It also tells you about the character of their team. Steve Henson's team does not give up when they're down. It really is all about these two guys, Javon Jackson and Keaton Wallace, two sophomores that combined for about 49% of the Roadrunners scoring. There's a lot of great backcourts in Conference USA. You think of the kids at Marshall, and you think of the backcourt at Old Dominion. But for me, these two guys, as sophomores, have probably gotten themselves to the top of Conference USA in terms of backcourts. Look at those numbers. They're gaudy. 21 points a game versus for, Jack, for Javon Jackson and Keaton Wallace. He had 29 the other night. He was a big reason why they were able to come back because both these guys get it done behind the arc, but they're both capable of penetrating and finding other players. All right, for more on these two, let's head to the sideline. Olivia. Yeah, this morning at Shootaround, we talked with Roadrunners head coach Steve Henson about the difference between his sophomore guards, and he said Keaton Wallace is such a pro. He takes takes such good care of his body, watches a ton of film, just really reliable in that sense. And then Javon Jackson, who gets all this praise, is a gamer. He turns that light switch on and look out. So let's see if he does it. And we say hello to Glenn, point for UTSA. And let's take a look at starting lineup. Starting for UTSA, Giovanni DiNicolao, Javon Jackson, Keaton Wallace, Byron Cronin, Nick Allen, the Stretch big man and for Western Kentucky, first time they've had this lineup all season. Tavion Hollingsworth, Lamonte Bearden back in the starting lineup, making his third start. Jared Savage on with Josh Anderson, Charles Bassey. Our officials, James Breeding, John Hampton, and Jeb Hartness. Western Kentucky in their home whites. UTSA, the Roadrunners in their road blues. We've got 
10 on the floor. Everybody else with a nice view, and we're set to get underway. And to me, no team epitomizes their mascot and their nickname better than the Roadrunners. UTSA loves to get up and down. They play at a pace of about the 20th fastest in the nation. So look for them to push the issue in transition. Western wants to run. They don't want to run quite that much. So we'll see how this plays out tonight. We've got Brian, Nancy, James, Danny, and Derek going for the Hilltoppers. We'll be muttering your comments throughout the broadcast. Noah Koslov, Tim Scarborough, Olivia Decker with you in Bowling Green as Jared Savage swirls out the three. And there is Charles Bassey doing what he does best on the offensive glass. Yeah, you know, Steve Henson, the coach of UTSA, talked about Bassey hurting you more cleaning up the glass than he does on that first catch. And already on display, nice putback. Keaton Wallace, 22 in blue. Nick Allen, he's gonna force Bassey to guard him on the perimeter. Kicks it into the corner. Did Nick allow for a three? No, Bassey is second rebound. And if you've, and if you've watched UTSA over the last couple of seasons, their personnel has not changed much. And that's a good reason. They have a cohesive unit right there, guys that are used to playing with, with each other, particularly this starting five. UTSA 12 and 9 overall, 6 and 2 in conference, and their first turnover. They're tied for first in conference USA, and a good matchup to watch tonight with Javon Jackson, Tavion Hollingsworth, two really talented sophomores. Worth the price of admission, and certainly worth the price of coming in, tuning in on Facebook. These two guys, Jackson and Hollingsworth, will be guarding each other. Both guys need to have a good game for their team to be successful. Western Kentucky 11 and 10, 4 and 4 in conference. Tied for seven. They're six and two here on their home arena. Bearden pulls and hits a little bit range. Lamonte Bearden into the starting lineup finally. He didn't play a lot in the first semester. He was ineligible. And then he's slowly been nursing himself back into health and in good graces. Now he's in the starting lineup. Look for the chances and the probability of winning to improve for Western Kentucky. Jackson off the mark. Bearden, three, is around and out. Bearden is a steadying force, though, because, you know, they had the freshman Delano Blanton playing the point guard at six foot seven, six eight, And he was a little shaky at times under pressure, so Lamonte Bearden kind of gives them more of a stabilizing force. UTSA 0 for 3 to start the ball game. Savage, he's got that range and he shows it off. A touchdown lead to open things up. The Hilltoppers don't typically shoot a lot of threes, but the guy that is most reliable is Jared Savage, number two. Last in the conference at six threes made per game. UTSA tops in the conference with 11 threes per game. Wallace, no, it'll stay with the Roadrunners. The head coach of the Roadrunners, Steve Henson, in his third season, turns 51 on Saturday. The 2018 Conference USA Coach of the Year. Got a recent contract extension, too. He's done a terrific job. UTSA near the top of Conference USA. A lot of teams would not, a lot of people would not have predicted that. Floater from Jackson puts UTSA on the board. And Jackson, just a sophomore, along with Keaton Wallace, a young backcourt, but a dangerous one. Jackson, even with that big brace on his left leg, he's still very mobile. The turnover pass. on the entry pass. It's a bad pass when two guys intercept your pass. Allen trailing and finger rolling it home. What a great delivery as Allen slashing to the hoop. Great start for both teams. They both look comfortable right now running their offenses. Without a whistle, and there's Bassey going up top. Talk about nonverbal communication. That was big time. Wallace answers back. It's a 9-7 lead for Western Kentucky. Well, we know what we have here. This could potentially be an old-fashioned shootout. Oh, 
More than four minutes in without a whistle. To open up this ball game, free-flowing hoops here at Diddle. Hollingsworth, mid-range, no. Allen running the floor, Bassey knocks it away. Great hustle. We've come to our first break. And on Facebook, we don't do breaks. And if you're watching on Facebook, it's on the live CUSA page. And make sure any of your friends looking for it will be able to get into the comments on this page, not the stadium Facebook page. Pushing everybody to the live CUSA page as Western Kentucky leads 9-7 with 15.44 to go. Over to Olivia Decker. Hey, Olivia. Hey guys, so we mentioned at the beginning we want to hear from alums or anyone familiar with Bowling Green about some of their favorite Bowling Green spots. Today for lunch we went to Wild Egg. It was amazing, so thank you everyone for the recommendations there. And this whole city has so much history and so many cool parts about it. One that I found out today and have been looking up all day because I'm fascinated is the Mammoth Cave. It's beautiful, it's huge. It's the longest cave system in the world, almost 53,000 acres. That's just so impressive. I wish we had a couple more days here. I really want to go see it. And then the Corvette Museum, of course. That's the National Corvette Museum. But in 2014, as a lot of people familiar with the area will know, it was the victim of a 40-foot wide sinkhole. There you can see it before, looking pretty good. If you're a car person, this has got to be your idea of heaven. But then, the sinkhole happens, and unfortunately, in the natural accident, they lost eight rare, one-of-a-kind Corvettes. And that hole is 25 feet deep. So it's not all good news, but it's still interesting. It's still a part of the museum, and still a part of what makes Bowling Green so interesting and so quirky. Guys, how about that? Dan, you, you mentioned Wild Egg. I'm more focused on Wild Egg than I am on the Corvette. <laughs> that was, that everything biscuit was legit. It's like an everything bagel. A little sweeter, but in biscuit form. Is it safe to call you a foodie? Uh, I mean, I like, to, I like to eat. You like to eat. I like to eat. I like to find, I like to find all the good local spots. Rick Stansberry. In his third season, the 59-year-old is 53 and 38. He's got 346. Great inbounds play, great ISO on Fronin. And Savage got caught behind him. A great job of drawing up something out of the dead ball. And that's what good coaches do. And now UTSA will continue to play man-to-man. -man. But if they get hurt off the dribble like this, look for them to change it up. Bearden with the straight line drive. Daniel St. Javon Jackson's going up for 25 plus tonight. We've got Utsava born for UTSA. Odell can't hear me because he says his volume is off. So I'd make sure that your volume is up on your computer. And then also, if you roll your mouse over where the video is of the game, then in the bottom right corner, you'll see a little volume button. You click that and <laughs> most likely you should be able to get sound. Tech support, I love it. It's 11 9 Western Kentucky in front. Josh Anderson, who broke his nose, and he hits two here. He broke his nose in the game on last Thursday against Southern Miss. He took a nasty elbow. I was calling that game nasty elbow to the nose as Keaton Wallace hits his second three. And he had some repairs on the nose, and now he's got the mask on. You know, they, they have three sophomores on this team, Hollingsworth, Anderson, and Jake Omer, number 21, who's about to check in. And all three of them have broken their noses. Yeah, and Hollingsworth broke it twice last year. Quite remarkable. Hollingsworth leans hey. in. Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth had perhaps his best game of his career as a freshman last year, 30 points down in North Texas, wearing that mask that you see Josh Anderson, number four, wearing for Western Kentucky. 15-12, Western Kentucky, seven for 11. UTSA's made oh. now six of the last seven. Oh, look out. Uh, Nick Allen, the dunk, and he fell right on his back. And, and that's why they allow you to hold on to the rim on dunks, because that could happen. He's, his legs get taken out. Take a look, beautiful drive. Dunks it out with the two hands, but he had no way of, his legs kind of swung up under him because of momentum. Take a look, a second look at this. Watch how his legs go out, and he couldn't quite hang on to the rim. He looked like a Cirque du Soleil participant right there. And there's, there's multiple dangers with that. One, just falling on your back, falling on your coccyx, it's painful, but 
when you go to put down your hands, yeah. put down your wrists, you're yep. now in danger of breaking your wrists. And that has happened more often than you would think. People breaking their wrists, trying to break a fall on a dunk. But he seems to be okay. Certainly a little shaken up, as anyone would be. That actually vibrated the floor all the way over here. So we know that was quite a spill. Pretty good move, though. Aggressive move to the basket. Hey, Abe, going for Western Kentucky. 15-14, the home team in front with 13.45 to go here in the first half. And here's the zone. We, we said it would happen because of that dribble penetration. Jake Omer into the game for the first time, 21 in white. And Jake is a three-point specialist, but he's had trouble finding the mark. A lot of deflections right there in that last possession. Coach Rich Stansberry can't like what he's seeing out of this second group. You see Blanton and also Tolo Smith double zero into the paint. He still has Savage and Hollingsworth on the floor. Omer misses to three. Wallace will control. Keaton Wallace, the sophomore from Dallas. Went for 29 on Saturday against ODU, and there's Jackson oh. falling away. How did he make that? I don't think he could see the basket because Jake Omer fouled him on that one. He got away with it. And that's what we'll see tonight. Just a terrific shooter from downtown. He's already knocked down 64. That's 65 now on the season. Savage right back. It's the first lead of the evening for UTSA at 17-15. Jackson, while you're up, go. fill her up again. <laughs> let it fly, young fella, let it fly. Woo. Rick Stansberry calls time with UTSA jumping out to its largest lead at five at 20 to 15. How about this first three from Jackson? Javon Jackson a couple of possessions ago, he got the ball up in the high post, loses it, and then bounces back behind the line and able to splash it. And then this second one, the catch and shoot, this is a no-no. You better know where that guy is at all times, and you better know where Keaton Wallace is as well. Look at this, high scoring duos. A familiar one at the top, Barrett and Williamson, Mike Dom, and Dave Jenkins at, at, at South Dakota State. But right there, Javon Jackson and Keaton Wallace, that is some potent production from the perimeter for those two in particular, Dom and those other guys get it done in other ways, but nonetheless efficient. They've got 14 of their team's 20. And I know Sam, our graphics producer, is thrilled to put Mike Dom on there. <laughs> you famously left him out of your top oh. 10 mid-major players before the season started. I did. That Hollingsworth was a, long on the three. Certainly an omission on my part. <laughs> and since then, I, don't, I not only follow Mike Dom, I follow his All-American mom as well on Instagram. <laughs> All right, back to basketball. <laughs> There's Benton, no. Oh, no travel Out of there. contact, no whistle. Adokie. Number 11 mixing it up with Tolu Smith. Jackson had it knocked away. And it'll be UTSA basketball when play resumes. An 8-0 run for the Roadrunners at 2015 with 11.51. Remember, use that hashtag WKU or hashtag UTSA VS WKU or if you just want to make it easier on yourself, hashtag Stadium Hoops. Put some photos on Instagram. We'll get them on the air. Olivia, what do you have? Okay, well, we are talking about Bowling Green, and we obviously also want to hear from our San Antonio viewers, and what a city. I love going to San Antonio, so write us where you like to go. We want to see what, what you guys are doing and where you're watching from. Don't forget to use the hashtag. But here we are, EA Diddle. It was built in 1963, and it houses the military science and phys physical education classes here in Western Kentucky. It's beautiful in here. When you walk in, you just feel the importance of it and the history of it. Look how many seats. It was named after the legendary basketball coach and the Hall of Famer Edgar Diddle and was hosted. It hosted the 1980 NCAA regional tournaments for both men's and women's basketball. And before the ABA and NBA merged, this arena also housed the Kentucky Colonels for a couple games. How about that? 
And then the POW chair, it sits up under the big jumbotron. There it is. And that is in remembrance of brave men and women who have sacrificed so much for our country. They keep that chair vacant in honor of them. And guys, also one U.S. president has been here to EA Diddle Arena. Do you guys know who it is? No, no that's him. No, he does. No. It was Ronald Reagan, and it was 1988. He paid a visit here. How about that? Pretty cool. Yeah. Went, 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 went for the Gipper. <laughs> 1988. Who knew that? Ronald Reagan was here. Yeah. Thanks, Olivia. And I've enjoyed just being here for about 24 hours. I went on a deep dive, a Bowling Green deep dive <laughs> on the internet. After last night, I had dinner at the Bistro, and Jordan, the bartender, was telling me all about Bowling Green. And he said that, I said, there are so many chain restaurants here. So I was just you know, so happy to find a local spot. And he said that the story is, and I looked it up, it's unsubstantiated reports and surveys that say that there are more chain restaurants in Bowling Green per capita than anywhere in the United States. I could co-sign that. I mean, just driving around every corner, every strip, multiple restaurants. It becomes a test market for many as the officials will take a look to decide where the ball is headed and it'll be going left to right with Western Kentucky. And Daniel saying that he can't stop Jackson and Wallace just asked ODU. You're right, you know what? I mean, that, that should be UTSA basketball. It's, uh, 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 yeah, uh, um, should be UTSA basketball. Yeah. Might not want to play that replay in the arena. <laughs> Feeding the post, it's oh. Tolu Smith. No. Smoked one. Wide open. Great job of getting it to him. Tolu, got to finish, big fella. Aitim Bior is 23 in blue. Jackson can't finish. You get the feeling Javon Jackson can get to the rim anytime he wants. Anderson, they dare him to shoot, and he says, sure, keep daring me. And people are daring him less and less because he's getting more and more comfortable. And again, he's just a sophomore as well. If he develops that stroke right there, he's going to get paid a lot of money when he leaves Western Carolina, Western Kentucky, because he can do almost everything else. Terrific athlete, solid ball handler, great defender. Jackson got it back, got his own board. Man, that kid just hunts the basketball and gives out buckets. Look how far off they're playing Anderson when he catches this. He's got a good four feet in front of him. He's eight for 23 on the season from three, and the pass goes off the hands of double zero Smith. No, let's watch Jackson get to the rim. And right there, you have to be there when he catches it on the perimeter. Josh Anderson was tardy. And as a result, Jackson makes him pay the price. Look at those numbers. 21 points a game already with 10 points tonight. Joe Fannin Schmidt, shout out from the Ville. Rooting for Western Kentucky from Louisville. Jackson off balance. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. The PA announcer is going to be saying that name a lot tonight. And they fall back into that 2-3. Steve Henson said he likes to play man-to-man, -man, but against this team, he's got to play some zone to keep the ball out of the paint, both off the, the dribble as well as feeding the post. Bearden, just good defense from Nicolau. And Bearden got it back. Giovanni De Nicolau was able to stop the initial onslaught, and there was Bearden to stay with it. De Nicolau, another solid player. He's a junior from Italy. Gives them a good ball handling, steady three-point shooter as well. Looking back door, and it's cut off by Anderson. Third turnover for UTSA. Here's four and white. Omer for three. It's well off. And that's what Omer was brought here to do. And if he's not doing that, he's going to find himself sitting down really soon. He's a solid player, good player. Just needs a little bit more minutes to get that stroke back. <laughs> oh, he's got oh. range. Oh, Javon Jackson. If this was the 80s, I'd be making an AT&T reference because that was long distance. Most people don't even know what that is anymore, do they? <laughs> you got a calling card, too? <laughs> yeah. 
976 number. <laughs> the lead is seven, and Jackson's got 15. Omer, no. Smith, the putback, but he's fouled. Let's take a look at the show that Javon Jackson is putting on display tonight. Moving without the ball so well. Anderson trying to beat him around those screens. And to me, you have to stay glued to him and chase him through the same area that he runs through so you can get through those screens. And then this one is just cash money from downtown. And substitutions for the Roadrunners with Byron Fronin re-entering along with Keaton Wallace. And Charles Bassey getting set to check back in for Tolu Smith after the free throw. Rick Stansberry like to play a little bit with Smith and Bassey in there together against a smaller UTSA team. This time they substitute for each other, so it's the original starting lineup for Western Kentucky against the starting five for UTSA. And really, Rick Stansberry, to me, feels like he has to steal minutes because you can't play this five for 40 minutes. They just wear down, down the stretch. So you got to get minutes from that bench. But he doesn't like the productivity or the lack thereof he's getting from that, that group of guys. Wallace takes contact from Hollingsworth. That's his first and the team's first. Just their first personal foul as we approach the eight-minute mark here in the first half in a pretty clean half. The 27-22, the Roadrunners in front. Trying to hit that soft spot in the zone with Frone in there. And he's not a threat to shoot from there, but he's a good passer. Allen misses the mid-range from the left side. And that's where it is dangerous getting the ball in there. And Levante leered it. I don't know what that was. And back yeah, comes Jackson. That. He doesn't care if he doesn't have numbers, and he gets swatted at the rim by Anderson. Wallace. Wow. These two guards. And I know Old Dominion fans love Ahmad Caver and and Brent and Bryant Stiff, BJ the second, and Marshall's group with Burks and Elmore, but this UTS and A squad is exceptional in the backcourt. My goodness, did Western Kentucky need that with Lamonte Bearden? But that's why he's in there, though. He's a steadying force. We saw that wild play, and he'll give you some of those. And he gives you other good things as well. And to me, the good far outweighs the bad. This is fourth three of the season, and that's too easy. Keaton Wallace in the soft spot. Well, if you take your eye off of Wallace and Jackson for just a second, they're going to hurt you. You'd almost think about doing maybe a triangle and two. I'm sure they've seen a few of those this year. Again, daring him to shoot. I dare you. Three point goal shot. Josh Anderson, it's been getting better. I mean, even his free throw shooting last year, around 50%. This year, about 70%. It's all, this has been an issue with Western Kentucky all year. Wallace Short has been, when the other team makes a run, do they have the composure to get themselves back in it? Yeah. And they have so far. They've answered that call here in the first half. Emma. Emma has to make a layup. Sometimes it's just better to be lucky than good. A fortuitous bounce. Look what I found. Some cash money from downtown for Wallace. Olivia, what do you have? Well, guys, we have some Instagrams coming in. We're going to go ahead and take a look at. Of course, we have some dogs. These are Western Kentucky fans. They've got tons of dogs here. This is Lexi. She's cheering for the Hilltoppers. Very cute dog, old Lexi. Looks like she was wearing red, too. And then Tanky Bing Bong and Bunny Slave. Now, wow, that's creative. Say, top of the best, go tops. Again, that's a good costume. That's got to be Halloween, right? Right? Thank you, Holden. Okay, that's a ton of fun. Okay, Javon Jackson on a roll, 15 points, and he's not slowing down. Of course, he's a reigning Conference USA Freshman of the Year, and he leads the league right now in scoring, averaging over 21 points. But he missed the first three games of the season. All of those were losses. Since he's returned with the starting lineup, which has been the last 13 games, the Roadrunners have gone 10 in three. That's just incredible. Guys, his impact on the game cannot be underestimated. No, certainly not. And, and thanks, Levy. And he was, and he struggled in that first part of the game against ODU on Saturday. He came in, he was 
He was four for 20, and then he had, then he was one for five for He's three. He's like, so what, though, right? Then he, had, then he had four field goals in the last three minutes. Yeah, and, and that's how he plays, though. He, you know, he'll give you a stretch where, gosh, he might be struggling a little bit, but he never loses confidence. He never stops shooting. And because of that, when he comes out and he's on fire, you're in trouble. This kid is absolutely a scoring machine. And look how he pursues his own misses. Just a little guy, but he goes in amongst the trees and gets it done. But then here, too much room. That's cash money all day, all night. And then, if you're Josh Anderson, you can't try to cheat the double screen. You have to chase him through that screen, go through the same area he goes through to get to be there when he catches it. And then right there, a simple catch and shoot from about 25 feet. And then look at him just move without the ball and just way too much space right there. You have to crowd him, bother him, take up space, and really be physical with him or you're going to get hurt. Jackson and Wallace move on for 26. There's Bassey immediately, and that had to be the message coming out of the timeout. Well, we're going get inside. down low to Charles Bassey, and that's what they do, and they'll go to the free throw line. Well, a lot of coaches call that a five, meaning our five man needs to touch the ball before anybody thinks about looking at that rim. Charles Bassey, we talked about him at the top, can dominate a game. He's been quiet here so far. He's made both his shots, and now he's made his only free throw. Made both of those. But you have to be deliberate in trying to get him the touches because you can play so much better once he touches it because he's a willing passer, and he is such a good scorer in the post. He's going to command the double team. Number six recruit in this class. Jackson around Hollingsworth. <laughs> Crazy floater. That's one of those where a coach, if he doesn't know Javon Jackson, is saying, no, 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 no. All right. Listen, he he is absolutely putting these guys in the blender and hitting the puree button. Bearden. Oh, again. Monte Bearden came in with just three threes made all season, and he's got two so far in the first half. Yeah, and who would have thought it? You know, Josh Anderson has only had seven threes made all season, and he's got two knockdowns from downtown. So it's that kind of game. Again, an old-fashioned shootout. you got to love it if you're watching it on Facebook. It's a one-point lead for UTSA. Jackson. Bassey the board. Jeremiah, you're right. UTSA, they could change their name to the, to the man bunch from the Roadrunners. <laughs> A lot of ponies out there. Long. And Allen clears the rebound. Back comes Keaton Wallace. Averaging 19 a game himself. Allen's got that range. Allen may have gotten away with a walk. Jackson to his left, up at the right. That's a tough shot. But they'll get a fresh 30. Wide open, Wallace, Man. and Jackson knew it. Juwan Jackson's walking back with the three rays <laughs> as Wallace was just lining it up. But you know who made that play? Allen. Allen knew that he wanted to give it to Wallace. He just pretended like he was going to shoot, but he was waiting for Wallace to get behind that arc so he could give it to a better shooter. A great, unselfish play. That's great ball movement. Savage missed, though. The Bearden was walking back like he thought Savage was going to make it from the corner. <laughs> Doesn't work that way all the time, does it? Hey, Tiala Bowen for UTSA. Great to have you here on the live CUSA Facebook page. Our stadium crew with you. Appreciate you spending part of your Thursday evening with us. Jackson, a lot of contact. Four he shot. finishes, but that'll be on the floor. The <laughs> foul on Hollingsworth, his second with a four-point lead for UTSA, and Wallace has 14, Jackson with 17. And Wallace from downtown right there, an easy play off of the scramble, and, and you really have to just know where those guys are at all times, and the numbers bear it out. This is the first half, guys, 17 points and 14 points tonight. And look at the shooting percentages. These guys aren't missing very often, and now Jackson's about to get himself to the free throw line for a few more free ones. 
I knew Olivia enjoyed that everything biscuit earlier. Olivia, how you doing? Well, you don't have to throw a girl under the bus like that. I mean, <laughs> what do you, you mean? You can but because you biscuit. ate? <laughs> yeah, it was a good biscuit. That was a good biscuit. A, a very highly rated biscuit, I will say that. <laughs> uh, I don't ever want to leave Bowling Green because of that biscuit. Well, we've now seen Rick Sansbury twice in a row. We saw him in the loss at Louisiana Tech. And of course, he talked to us earlier today about shoot around and said, Five games in 10 days. I'm not making any excuses. I don't want our players to make excuses, but that's kind of how their season's been. They had three losses, then three wins, then three losses. And he told me last Saturday, he said, streaks aren't about being consistent. It's about finishing. So he's a big, no excuses type of coach. That's really inspiring when you're playing when you're playing for that guy. But he also has stressed to us that they're just not a good passing team. And I asked him, well, how do you fix that? How do you practice that? How do you train for that? And he said it's all about motion and decision. So that this is a very young team. It's a very inexperienced team. And he always points to that. So as they're trying to figure that out, he thinks when they go big that they're better at limiting turnovers and they're better at passing. So Tim especially, how do you think that when you do go big, you can limit some of those turnovers and mistakes when you still have young players like Charles Bassey? Well, what he wants to do is put another big on the floor so that the double team gets hammered. Meaning, Bassey, when he gets double, is probably gonna be the other big, and he finds a, a suitable scorer in the paint, dishing it off, and then that team will stop double teaming him as much. But when you get those doubles, when you don't have the shooters on the perimeter, because they really don't have guys that you have to be there when they catch it, then that double team is more effective, and the passing angles are less and then you turn it over because you have nowhere to go with the basketball. So he's hoping putting two bigs on the floor at the same time like he has now, double zero and 23, both of them are on the floor at six foot 11. Maybe that'll alleviate some of that pressure. Ooh, oh boy. Bassey went down and he's grabbing mm. his right ankle. Mm. He grabbed the rebound, went down in pain, and immediately grabbed his right ankle and he's rolling around in pain, being attended to Immediately, we'll take another look at it as Rick Stansberry comes out to take a look and the crowd is quiet and he gets up and he'll try to walk it off. Take a look. That was old school, right? You gotta walk it off like we used to. Came down on his own foot. At the yeah, that was a weird twist of an ankle. And this place, you can hear a pin drop because he is valuable. Take a look at these numbers and where he ranks amongst freshmen in the country. 27s in points, 7 and 2 point field goal percentage, 9.7 rebounds a game, second in the country, and double doubles. That's points and rebounds for him, third in the nation. Yeah, see Lamine, Lamine Janae, the, uh, the freshman at Cal Northridge from Finley Prep. Not sure if he was a teammate of Byron Fronin, or I'm sorry, from uh, he was at Finley Prep and uh, Fronin was at Bishop Gorman, both out in Vegas. I'm sure they played each other. Hollingsworth misses for three. Banton the rebound, they'll fight for it, and 20 has two, and it's a two-point lead for UTSA. And that's where Delano Banton is more effective, getting in close to the basket. Take the ball out of his hands, there's a lot of pressure. He's a much more effective player away from the basketball on the perimeter, and he gives them size. They're using him at the four right now, so a versatile player, number 20, Banton. Now, Fronin will not shoot it. Good rebounder, good passer, but just not a threat to put it up. De Nicolau lost it, and that's great defense oh. from the Hilltoppers. It really was. Well, take a look at the last possession down at this end for Western Kentucky. They're going up against smaller players, and they are taking advantage of their length in the paint. Six foot, eight inches. Banton able to get a second chance opportunity due to his size. There's Lamonte Bearden made his third start. Replacing Benton in that starting lineup and it's a turnover the other way. And both Bassey and Smith turn it over at a alarming rate for Bassey at times. He's got 66 to just 16 assists coming into tonight. But Tolo Smith turns it over three to everyone himself. Oh, there's the turnover. 
And De Nicolai will be whistled for the foul. Good and foul, though. And that's, oh, yeah, sure. And, and it wasn't a clear path foul either because they had guys back. Yep. But the turnovers have been a huge issue, and a lot of that has to do with the freshmen getting sped up in key moments, including Bassey especially, but also just the lack of steady point guard play. When you've got a negative three and a half turnover margin, which yeah. is 11th out of 14, and you're turning the ball over in Conference USA at nearly 16 a game, it's killer. It's detrimental, there's no doubt. Collingsworth, I think he was just surprised. He was so wide open, and we've got a tie game at 37. And UTSA will call timeout. Well, that's, that's a mental breakdown right there because you never want to give a clear pass to the basket. They have to guard this a certain way. And, and really, the big is supposed to step up and prevent that drive to the basket. And that's him, Muir did not step in. And that was an obvious miscommunication. They want to talk it over and clean that up right away. So our players to watch, Tim, with uh, Javon Jackson is, everyone's been watching him. And Tavion Hollingsworth, Jackson winning that battle, but at the moment, we're tied at 37, which points to Western Kentucky making sure that, yes, yeah, sure, Jackson can score, Wallace can score, but if you take everybody else out, and UTSA needs needs somebody else, a combination of two guys, Nick Allen, the Nickel out to score in order to be competitive. And they're both capable. And, you know, obviously, Fronin doesn't really look to score or even shoot the ball. And Coach Henson said even when they walk into an open gym, he doesn't come out and pick up a basketball and shoot. He does other things because he knows where his strengths are. There's Jackson off the timeout, and Bassey grabs the board. to see Bassey back on the floor. They're staying big. And this is old-fashioned basketball here. A guy on each block saying, hey, we're gonna stick you little guys in the paint and make you pay the price for going small. You don't see many teams do that. Even in the NBA, you don't see teams mm -hmm. do that. 81 seconds to go here in the first half. We're tied at 37. Noah Kozlov, Tim Scarborough, Olivia Decker, our stadium crew with you in Bowling Green. Hollingsworth. But it's going to be going the other way. You don't count the bucket. The bucket's though. good. More importantly, yeah. But it's going to be a foul on Charles Bassett. Let's see if we can take a look. Obviously, away from the ball. It's Hollingsworth seeing the mismatch off the dribble. And Bassey just tosses Jackson aside like he was a salad. It's a 6 0 run for Western Kentucky. The drought. It's about 3.30 for UTSA, and a foul on the rebound. That's and a foul on Fronin. And as good as UTSA pl has played on the offensive end, and they have been exceptional in the first half, they find themselves trailing by two and on defense because Western Kentucky has matched their energy and their efficiency on offense. There's Bassey, and Western Kentucky has a four-point lead. I mean, that is just so simple for him, catching it on the block. And if you're going to play behind him, you're going to get beat. Donato run over the last four minutes. Brony with nowhere to go. Jackson wants it. Bior over the outstretched arm of Charles Bassey. Nice move by Bior. It starts with getting that ball. It's amazing what happens to a defense when you get the ball in that high post area with someone who knows what to do with it. Great move that time by Bjor. Got a foul out near midcourt on Keaton Wallace. Again, no commercials here on Facebook, so stick with us at the half. We'll go around Conference USA. Pretty quick first half, too. Efficient. What's amazing what happens when the ball is going into the basket. Not a lot of turnovers, certainly not a lot of fouls. Just six fouls for UTSA and just three fouls committed by Western Kentucky. Three seconds, Hollingsworth, no whistle. Nope. 
Just a bit out of control with point five to go. And that's how the half will end. We went back and forth in this first half at Western Kentucky as a 41-39 lead. And when leading at the half this year, that's been the issue for Western Kentucky. They're just six of seven, but this isn't one of those big leads at the half. Let's go over to Olivia, who's with Coach Rick Stansberry. Coach, I, never, I know you're never comfortable with a halftime lead, but what have you seen in the first half? Not comfortable at all when they're shooting the basketball. I mean, um, we know Jackson Wallace just got to find ways to limit them something. How can you do that from what you've seen that they're doing? It's been hard. You know, we got hands in their face, they make it. You know, you get up on them too much, you got the ability to go by you, they're difficult to defend. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Coach. It's a 41 39 lead at the half for Western Kentucky over UTSA. Time now, let's go inside the CUSA Studios and join Maddie Morris. Two point lead for Western Kentucky at the break, 41 39. And welcome back courtside here at Diddle Arena. Noah Koslov, Tim Scarborough, Olivia Decker on the sidelines for us tonight. So, Tim, explain bonus play to me. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Well, no. So, so we're trying. They're trying something new this year, and I give them a lot of credit in Conference USA to try to make the final four games of the season more meaningful. So it could do one of two things: it can increase the seed of the automatic bid of the team that wins the Conference USA tournament, because I don't think this year Conference USA is going to be able to get two teams in. But also, if they were trying to get two teams in, it would just boost the resume. So here's what we've got: so the final four games of the season. The teams are going to be in three different pods. And that's what all teams are fighting for. One through five, six through 10, 11 through 14. So you'll play, if you're, say, the two seed, you will host three and four, and then go on the road for five and one. Right. If you're the four seed, you'll host five and one. So you go back to, it's kind of like the snake draft. Right. So you'll host five and one, and then go on the road for two and three. I give a lot of credit for the innovation. Oh, it's innovative, no doubt. And the goal, again, was to get a higher seed so that the top teams in Conference USA won't lose a game to a lower team, say the 13th or 14th team, which is probably their, their RPI back in the day, was, you know, 200 or less. And it really hurts their chances. When you look at the championship seeding will be based on full 18 conference game schedule. So the way you, what you just explained, the same team could be playing each other again, for example. The way it shakes out, UTSA could potentially come back to here and have to play Western Kentucky again. Right. It's just that. It doesn't matter who you played or where you played. It's all about the seedings after uh, February 16th. But it also certainly then, it, it, it allows for some logistic issues, to say the very <laughs> least, when teams don't know where they're going. Not just teams. How about broadcasters? Well, sure. Yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> That's easy. That's easy for one person to book a right. flight, but you're trying to get whether it's charters or commercial flights, and you need to be able to get all those, you know, everybody on the same plane if you're doing if you're going commercial, trying to get everybody on the same plane with you know with one week's notice. And maybe? just think about where Conference USA is located. Norfolk, Virginia, UTEP is all the way in El Paso, Texas. I mean, you Conference USA is over a good swath of the nation, so Potentially, there's going to be some logistical issues, but they'll cross that bridge when they come to yeah, it. Yeah, and then also, though, for senior nights around the conference, that's, mm -hmm. that's usually a big night, and families will schedule their own schedules around. They'll, you know, they'll yeah. work their schedules around it. You don't know when you're going to have a senior night because you don't know where you're going to be in the pod and when you're going to be hosting the games. And you won't know until February 16th after the last game is played that night where everything shakes out and we'll be able to slot one through 14. Once we know that, we'll know the matchups. Then you better get on the phone and get on the internet. Yellow pages? No, no, no yellow pages. <laughs> I'm going to use my landline and call somebody up. <laughs> get your booking agent to... <laughs> Here, no, go ahead. All right, let's take a look at what's going on around the league tonight. So that's a big one. The ODU, the win over North Texas. Yeah, that's big. So depending on what happens here tonight, UTSA could lock up or, you know, move into sole possession of first place as Southern Miss dominated FIU, which is significant. And look at what that's a road Marshall, game too. Look, at, look at Marshall and UTEP. 
in a one-point game. At halftime. What, what, in the uh, second half. What a shocker. Uh, what a shocker that would be. Yeah, that's, this is quite. And Conference USA has kind of been that way, Noah. When you think about think about that Old Dominion Western, Western Kentucky game, Old Dominion was trailing 0 to 21. 21 nothing. They came back and won that game. We saw what UTSA did on Saturday versus Old Dominion. Western Kentucky lost three games in a row where they were ahead by 15 points at some point in the game. This is a topsy turvy league right now. There are a lot of situations where I could see. You know, the top teams in this league having multiple losses, and it's already that the, the case. A lot of teams with two losses or more. I think you've just teased up a thumbs up, thumbs down I'll segment right. here on Facebook in the second half. Let's take a look at some first half highlights. And for UTSA, it was Javon Jackson. Well, Javon Jackson was J.G. Wentworth in the first set, first half. 877 catch now. Look at him <laughs> throw it in time after time. 17 points in the first half. He had the touch, the feel of Cotton. And that right there is just a defensive breakdown. A no-no if you're guarding Jackson. You better know where he is, and you better stay connected to him. Look, all he needs is a little bit of room and a lot of opportunity. This kid is money. On the other side, Lamonte Bearden, we talked about him getting more playing time, getting back into the flow. He's in the starting lineup now, and he paid dividends. Big time move there off the dribble, and that's what he brings. He'll have one or two plays that'll leave you scratching your head, but again, the good far outweighs the bad. You better guard him from downtown. He hasn't been stroking it, but he has found the mark. A couple of knockdowns from three. And as well as UTSA played offensively, Western Kentucky actually has the lead. Olivia, what do you have coming out of halftime? Yeah, Roadrunners head coach Steve Henson just told me we're really happy we held Jared Savage to only three points, but he's not happy with his defense overall. He says now in the second half he wants to mix up, mix up some defensive looks, and he just didn't feel like they had good defensive intensity. So that was his halftime message. Yeah, the over fans were happy in that first half at 41-39. <laughs> Western Kentucky shot 47% from the floor, 5 of 15 from 3. UTSA as Denicolau has nice. two, and we're tied up. UTSA in that first half shot 48.5%, and better from three at 7 for 14. Denicolau, textbook move off the dribble. He jumped off the wrong foot. But you can forgive that because he was able to get it up on the rim. Great penetration. Bassey gets bumped. And the foul on Allen. We, Bassey will go to the line and shoot two. We mentioned how clean that first half was. Not a lot of turnovers, not a lot of fouls. The game was aesthetically pleasing to the eye for sure. For both fan bases, I would say. The ball was going through the hoop. A couple of head scratching plays that we talked about in the first half for Western Kentucky. But for the most part, once they really figured out Jackson, remember he had 17 points in the first half, but he had a ton of those in the first 10 to 12 minutes of that first half. They did a much better job of staying with him and eliminating his touches, let alone shots. Bassi, a 76% free throw shooter, is perfect four for four tonight. And Hollingsworth and Jackson here are the two players to watch. And right now, Jackson has been giving it to Hollingsworth. Woo. Makes it look easy, and he's got a game-high 20. Well, if you're going to have him rub off of two screens like that, you better give Hollingsworth some help. And now a steal by Jackson, one on two. It's good defense by Lamonte Bearden, and back comes Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth up top to Bassey. It wasn't pretty, but it'll work. It wasn't pretty, but it counts. And Jackson on that prior play, he didn't make the shot, but he was one on two, but you felt like he had the advantage. Allen, good pass to Fronin. Nick Allen is the guy that Coach Stansberry was worried about because of plays like that. He just facilitates offense. That's dangerous as Fronin got in the way of Josh Anderson on the lob. Well, he prevented himself from going viral right there because if Josh Anderson catches that, he can get up. I might have to post that one on the internet. You can post it on Instagram. Use the hashtag Stadium Hoops, hashtag UTSA VS WKU, and we'll get your photos on the broadcast. Join us in the comments section. Hey, Rebecca, rooting for Western Kentucky. 
Great defense. There's Allen poking it away. Did a good job on the denial. Oh, and then Bassey threw it back court, which you he, can't do. He, he knew in the second he did it. And, he, you know, he's shaking his head. They're all telling him, but he knows what he did. But take a look at the great defense by Nick Allen. Didn't foul, didn't climb his back. They got it back, but then Bassey turns it over. Coach Stasbury is looking at him like, somebody teach these guys the rules. I didn't think I had to go through that. Yeah, he's a freshman. <laughs> Just a kid. Some things don't need to be said, right? Two minutes in, one point lead for the visiting Roadrunners. Wallace off the screen. He never really set his feet, and it's an air ball. I like the action that Steve Henson runs to get these guys shots on the perimeter, though. It's really difficult to guard some of the angles of these screens. Henson played at Kansas State. And an all Big 8 first team selection back in 1989. The all-time leader in assists for the Wildcats. Spent some time in the NBA as well as Bearden circles it out. You forget about the playing resume of these guys sometimes. Right? We were talking about Old Dominion, Jeff Jones, one of the best players in the history of UVA. He certainly played on a great team with Ralph Sampson back in the early 80s. Thrown in. Not his game, but he'll go to the line. He draws the foul. I'm Jared Savage. I like the co cohesiveness of the UTS Ro UTSA Roadrunners. They understand each other. Everybody plays their role, and they play it to perfection. There's Steve Henson, who played for Lon Kruger, then coached under Lon Kruger at Illinois with the Hawks. UNLV, Oklahoma. He was the 44th overall pick in 1990 by the Milwaukee Bucks. He played in the CBA for Flip Saunders. Oh, I, was yeah. asking, I was asking him questions about some of his NBA head coaches. Mm -hmm. He's played for plenty of names that you know, B.J. Carlissimo, Doug Collins, Alvin Gentry, now the head coach of the Pelicans, among others. UTSA has used this zone. And it's been pretty effective. Anderson couldn't finish the reverse. Bassey got away with a foul on Wallace. He sure did. Bior out of bounds. It'll remain UTSA basketball. See like if Bassey we can was, take a look. Yeah, yeah look like Bassey was frustrated and got away with the foul. And here's Anderson. You really don't want to give him a run through the rim. Fortunately for them, it didn't go. And look at that right there. Bassey, it's a couple of love taps. No harm, no foul. Quite literally. Good cut by Fronin. Couldn't finish. Bassey grabs it. And this 2-3, they're going to stay in it. There's just not a lot of threats on that perimeter. Obviously, you have to shade towards Savage. There is Savage. Didn't look good coming off his hands. Anderson, the offensive rebound, and he'll be rewarded for the hustle. You have to like the energy of Anderson. Just a terrific athlete. Just a sophomore. Again, his game is developing over the course of the season, over the course of his career. He just gets better and better. We know about his athleticism, but his skill set is starting to come along as well. Anderson playing with that broken nose, broken last Thursday against Southern Miss. And also in that game, Delano Benton took a spill himself. It wasn't a clip, took a spill at midcourt. Yeah. And caught his tooth on his lip and got, ended up getting a few stitches. He got four stitches in his chin. There you see Delano. Pam asking, why can't the WKU channel not carry Hilltopper games? Well, this one's a Facebook exclusive, so we appreciate you joining us. The live CUSA oh. page. Oh, you got to be kidding. Jackson. Boy, did he take a shot. They they have to go look at this at after they do the administrative. They're going to go look at this at the monitor about the, about the uh, head shot that he just took. And Ooh. it's unintentional, but nonetheless, intention doesn't matter when your head is getting hammered. It's going to be a flagrant one. He'll get two in the ball. The crazy thing is he almost makes this shot. And Tavion Hollingsworth, obviously a sense of urgency <laughs> based on the way this guy is shooting the ball. And Hollingsworth trying to navigate through those screens. Of course, he's a little late. 
just trying to recover and unfortunately the angle he took took out the head of Javon Jackson. But how about Jackson just seemingly unfazed by it? I mean, he went down, he wasn't demonstrative, he kind of just tapped his head as if, okay, you guys are gonna look at it, right? He hit me in the head. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a flagrant one. Yeah, two shots in the ball, nothing, like, wasn't, yeah, nothing, nothing. Wasn't intentional. No malice, because obviously they have flagrant two in the rule books as well, which would be an automatic disqualification. But you see, navigating through these screens, and that's what I was talking about, some of these angles of the screens, really difficult to guard. Guys who can shoot the way these guys can shoot and go off the dribble. But clearly that was nothing intentional, but certainly deserving of a flagrant. Our officials, James Breeding, John Hampton, Jeff Hartness, doing a nice job here tonight at Western Kentucky, explaining to Steve Henson what's going on. And also, on that, Hollingsworth hit his hand first. So he's clearly going for the ball. He's going for the ball. Got a question from Brian saying, what Conference USA team do you think could be a second weekend team if the in the NCAA tournament? He thinks Western Kentucky could be if they learn to hold on to leads. I think, I think there are a few teams second that could. Second weekend, that means what, well, Sweet 16? Yeah, and I, th I think there are a few teams that could win a few games because they aren't the dominant teams as Jackson misses at the free throw line. You know, in the past, you think about recent Conference USA history, they've won the last four years in the first round as a lower seed, UAB, and then two years in a row, Middle Tennessee, and then last year, it was Marshall. They all have first round wins. To get to that second weekend, you need that second round win, and that's where Conference USA, even with those stronger teams, haven't been able to get over that hump. I don't see any teams that strong in Conference USA this year, quite honestly, so I really don't see a Sweet 16 team coming out of this conference this year. And then, of course, he got the three shots, did Jackson, since he was shooting the three. There he is. Can't give him that space, and he makes him pay. Just Javon a, Jackson. An old-fashioned six-point play. <laughs> well, he went two of three from the line. It's the old-fashioned yeah. five-point Five, play. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So the lead is five, and Jackson has a game-high 25 on five of seven from three. And he's hit five, yeah, from downtown. Anderson at the elbow, throws it away, thrown in there, loose ball. That's a horrible decision, though. Five on the shot clock, got to put it up. Savage with Wallace on him. Back rims it. Thrown in, and Hollingsworth collide. And that's going to be the fourth on Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth got the worst of that collision as well, and his fourth foul for his troubles. We'll take a look at the, at the prior play. Jackson, again, the angle of these screens, it is really difficult to stay with these guys. Give Steve Henson a ton of credit for the plate design and his ability to understand what he has in those guards. 15-15 to go, five-point lead for UTSA. Timeout on the floor, but not for us. Over to Olivia. Man, things are getting heated out there, so let's get it heated in between us. Let's have a little debate here. This is a fun segment we call Thumbs Up, Thumbs Down, and this topic is will the Conference USA winner have five losses? Now, for a little context, UTSA leads the conference with the best record at six and two but after them old dominion north texas uab and marshall all have three losses so i get it the odds are good but tim i'm going to send it to you first thumbs up or thumbs down will the conference usa winner have five losses i'm going to say five losses or more thumbs up the winner of this league will have at least five losses we just displayed three losses for almost every team utsa if they lose tonight Probably going to lose one of these two on this toughest road trip. So you're looking at three losses for everyone at that point with a whole lot of season to play. Now, someone could get hot. Western is a candidate to do that. We talked about them in the past having the ability to, if they can figure it out, spring together 10, 12, 14 games in a row. They have that potential. But I doubt it will happen because there's just too many games. Then you add the fact that once we reseed, all the top teams are going to play against each right. other. Once you, once, you get in, once, you get, once you get into the pods, it makes it yeah. tough. So that's why I'm going to go with thumbs up. Thumbs up. Because once you get into pod play, it makes it that much more difficult to run off those wins. Olivia, what do you think? I think you guys are haters. And I think <laughs> thumbs down because I think UTSA, they have five games after this one, and three of them are on the road. That's not easy, but I think they're a really solid team. And I think they can spare a couple wins. So I think 
they will win the conference, and I think they will have fewer than five losses. Well, we know the odds are not in their favor, but they're like Harrison Ford in Star Wars. Never give him the odds. Speaking of odds, Vegas been loving Western Kentucky this year, by the way. If you're watching the game for that, it was a six and a half point favorite for Western Kentucky tonight as BOR travel. That's just turnover number six for UTSA, only five for Western Kentucky. And Daniel likes the way Olivia reasons. As does Ryan, Joe more with Tim and me in this one. Well, I, I will say this. I think, again, the odds are certainly in, in favor that there's going to be a five-loss team that wins this league. Another opportunity. Bassey. Three opportunities on the one possession for yeah. Western Kentucky, and it's Bassey cleaning it up. And there's nobody in the gym that's going to stop Bassey when he gets the ball that close to the bucket. The Nicolau's been cold. Bassey, another rebound. Oh, watch out. The foul is on Jackson, his first. Bassey now with the double-double, his 25th of this season, 14 points and 10 boards. And if you haven't seen Javon Jackson, you know, even as a freshman, he went up against Trey Young, who is now in the NBA for the Atlanta Hawks, and did very well, but the comparisons to Trey Young are obvious because of their size and the similar game. But to me, Jackson has a chance to play at that level. He's just a sophomore, and his game, if it continues to develop, he, he's a special player, there's no doubt. Anderson with the left hand. Cuts the lead to one. There's Wallace some of that. can't respond. That's some of the pace we were talking about, though. That ball went in, and before you know it, they're down at the other end shooting a three. An uncontested one. They got away with it. Bassey wants it. Bassey Buckets. has it. Buckets. Western Kentucky back in front. Our sixth lead change of the evening. What a luxury, though to be able to throw it in there and know that he's going to deliver. Got NBA scouts sitting to the right of us as Jackson responds. Back and forth we go. He jumps off the TV screen, and he certainly jumps off the stat sheet tonight. 27 points. This guy is terrific. Again, Conference USA has some terrific backcourts. Up at Marshall in Norfolk, Virginia, the Old Dominion. Even North Texas, very good guards. But give Homer. me these two guys. It's a lot of contact, and we're going the other way. Bior stands in, and Omer whistled for the offensive foul. Jake Omer, an easy call right there, as EIA was right, or Bior was right where he needed to be. But so great is the defense are right behind us here. They're very close to us yeah. here, at, here at Diddle Arena. And so you've got fans yelling at the officials, uh -huh. even when they could just look at our monitor right here and look at the replay. Don't believe and it's our, clear. Don't, they don't believe they're lying eyes. It's clear. So you know, what fan, you know what fan is short for, right? Fanatic. Yeah, fanatic. So they certainly have a biased opinion. Nokia yep. in the game wearing 11. Jackson gets fouled Good. shooting the three. Nice. Is there anything that he can't do? Not on the basketball court, and not with the ball in his hands. He is virtually unguardable tonight. Oh, wow. Now we're going to look at this to see if this is a flagrant foul. I don't see anything I think they're just, No, they're just looking to see if it's a three or two. A three or two, and I think he may have stepped over the line. But nonetheless, let's see if we can get it on this angle. His right foot, he, he turned his right foot to try to stay behind that line. Yeah, oh my goodness. You talk about presence on the court. This guy knows literally exactly where he is. The precision. My goodness, that was amazing. This is the third time in his last six games that he's hit 
Six threes. The season high is six. He did it against Charlotte. He did it against Middle Tennessee. But that game against Middle, another crazy comeback. They ended up losing. He went six of 19 from three. Converts the four-point play. So he's got a essentially a five-point play and a four-point play. He's got 31. Noah. We've got 12.30 to go in the second half. I checked Santa's list. This kid is nice. Benton misses. Tolu Smith will go to the line. The career high for Jackson is 32, and he will certainly pass that tonight. And despite the scoring spree, that Jackson's been on. Western Kentucky has not allowed them to pull away. Now, they have a five-point lead here. They just cut it to four. But again, Jackson, you got to know where he is. Now, they're just going to play straight two, three zones to deny some of the penetration. But more importantly, they're having trouble handling all those screening angles, and it's killing them. They are forced to go zone. Wallace off the mark. And it'll be Western Kentucky basketball. The crowd wanted a foul there. Jared Savage got climbed by two different UTSA players. No foul, but they do retain possession. Under 12 here in the second half. Bearden, a little wiggle. And that's on Jackson, though. Jackson went for the steal, not once, but twice, and took himself out of legal guarding position and got got waxed off the dribble as a result. Already four passes without a dribble. Now Wallace puts it on the floor. And Keaton Wallace is on most teams the best player. Oh, but did not you? This one. Oh, the career high for Javon Jackson. <laughs> and he's not done. It's still 11 minutes to go and there are no signs of him stopping. His teammates can't believe it, but you better believe it tonight. 34 for the sophomore. Benton. Diving on the floor is Bearden. It'll be Roadrunners basketball. Jackson. Jackson has scored or assisted, even with just the one assist, on over 60% of their points tonight. This pace is exceptional, and Jackson is just thriving in it. Big time player. Olivia. Okay, I think we can guess who's gonna be a famous alum coming out of this game even. Wow, what a performance from Jackson. But this is a fun game we got. It's called Name That Alum. So we're gonna go through two famous people who have, uh, I can't say graduated from both schools because the first one did graduate from WKU. The second one left after his sophomore year. Okay, so I'm gonna warn you, these are pretty difficult. So let's see how well you know your school. For Western Kentucky, our first alum, he graduated from WKU in 1995, okay. He portrayed a famous bald villain on a hit TV show. Okay, who are some bald villains? Start thinking about that. And then he's also the lead singer in a band called Left on Laurel. So start thinking, I know you're on your computers, I know you'll probably just look it up. That's fine, but go ahead and comment who you think it is and uh, how proud he makes you all to be alums. Now our next famous alum, this is a fun one. I was, I'm the youngest on our crew and I'm the one who was most excited about this one. He's a globally known rapper and producer. He's actually performing at the Super Bowl halftime show and he's part of a celebrity it couple. Now, just to throw in an extra hint of my own, I'm gonna say he also has a very famous daughter named Stormy. Does that help anyone? That, I think, would help most people. Hey, Tim and Noah, what do you think? You got anyone? Uh, Stormy, what comes to mind? Sto I probably shouldn't go there. Um, <laughs> oh, I think I think I know we got one, the guys. rapper, but I don't know. Is it is it Travis Scott? Is that the UTSA one, Travis Scott? Right. Yeah. But I don't I don't know. Uh, yes. 
I don't know the Western. Well, it's okay because Gabe Russell got it on Facebook comments. Oh, okay. It's nice Michael job, Rosenbaum, and he was in. Uh, uh, he played Lex Luthor on Smallville. So where am I? Smallville. Saw it. Ah, bald yeah. villain. Yeah. Yeah. I never saw it. There we go. Famously bald villain. And there's, and there's Travis, Travis Scott. Scott. A lot going on at the Super Bowl down in Atlanta this week. And maybe I'll run into Travis Scott this weekend in Atlanta when I go home. Nice job, Cody, getting Travis Scott. Uh, yeah, you guys run in the same circles, right? <laughs> yeah. Me and the Jenners, yeah, and, and the Kardashians, of course. 61-56, Jackson has it. And it's poked away, but he might just put it up. Why not? Eight on the shot clock. Are you kidding me? Oh, he used the glass. Come on, man. I don't know if we can count that bucket. I mean, we got to raise the standard for this guy. He did not call glass on that. That's the UTSA high of the season. Now he's got 37. If he keeps playing like this, he may have called game. Put it up. Jackson. Too strong, but he's got an eight-point lead. Doing a little M like Shyamalan. Mr. Glass with a little smooch. Second look. And this is crazy because there's all kinds of defenders on him. And it doesn't matter. He's got the career high 37, the career high eight threes. He's eight for 11 from behind the arc. Tell your friends what's going on here. Anderson, a pretty reverse. Anderson. Put it in reverse. Beautiful play by Anderson. We talked about him not getting a step at the rim. It's dangerous. We see why can, that kid can flop. Look how far out this zone is extended now on these shooters. Wallace, floater around and out. He's having a tough second half is Wallace. It'll go Western Kentucky's way. And again, Keaton Wallace, as I was going to say earlier, is a guy that on most teams will be the best guard on that team. And he's an afterthought on this team because Jackson is so special. Bearden off the glass. And again, what's impressive tonight, Tim, about Western Kentucky is how they're taking these punches. It's something that's lacked so far in Western Kentucky's game this year. Yeah, you're right. They haven't been the most resilient group. But, you know, it's usually when they have a lead is when they start relaxing. But they've been pretty solid having to come from behind. Wallace. There's Wallace. Makes it a seven-point lead. He's got 17 points. Those two have combined for 13 threes on 21 attempts. Wow, that's efficient. Omar answers back. A Western Kentucky fan, that is certainly great to see Jake Omer knock one down from downtown. Jackson. Got away with one there. You can feel the anticipation every time he touches the basketball, then everybody here at Western Kentucky holds their breath. <laughs> Omer, while you're up. And it's going to stay with Western Kentucky. The foul is going to go on Jackson, his second. What a game, man. Brian wow. says that what Jackson's doing kind of reminds me of what jo Jody Meeks was doing at Kentucky tonight. That they played Tennessee at Knoxville. I got to think that was the 50 night for Jody Meeks. I know I'm fairly certain he went for 50 once in the league, or maybe that was the 50 night that he had in Kentucky. We're courtside here at Diddle Arena. Noah Kozlov, the former Liberty star, Tim Scarborough, Olivia Decker with you. It's special to see this type of performance happening right in front of you. And you know, I don't even think he's in a zone or anything like that. I think he's just organically playing this well. And when you get a lot of shots and you're a volume shooter, which he clearly is, when you do start to feel it and they're having trouble with some of the screening angles like we talked about, and he's getting some really good looks, 
He's going to make you pay for it, and he's doing just that tonight. Over to Olivia. Well, four-point game, and everyone at home is loving it, too. And guess what? We got more pups, and of course, he's a Topps fan. Foster has toporitis. Oh, no, Foster. You're going to need help for that. That's from Holden. Holden, I'm convinced, has a million dogs. Then Betty Coff says, Skipper says, wave your red towels. Man, if you're a San Antonio fan, you better send us your dogs because we're just assuming it must be a cat country over there. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing any dogs from them. And then Sleepy Full. Okay, and uh, interesting username as well, but thank you for that one. Says, go tops. And again, use the hashtag UTSA versus WKU. Keep them coming. But hey, UTSA fans, you got to keep them coming because you're getting shown up in the puppy love. And uh, all you Hilltopper fans are making me miss my dog. So thank you. Keep them coming. It's a lot of fun. You know what else is a lot of fun? Keeping practice light. And that's exactly what they do here. They had a pretty raging game of knockout. Knockout is like how you fall in love with basketball as a kid. It's too much fun. There you go. You can see they have Carson Williams, who's a transfer. He's sitting out this year. He actually beat Jared Savage. And buckets. Look at that. How much fun is that? And that's before practice just two days ago. So it's going to keep things light. You know, they lost their last game on Saturday. And then, of course, turning things back around and taking care of home court. And it starts with a guy who's not even playing right now. Guys, back to you. Saturday is a busy day on stadium. Starts at 1 Eastern, Patriot League, Lehigh, and Army. Later that evening, Tim and I will be there, along with Kristen Balboni up at Marshall for UTSA and Marshall, 7 Eastern, exclusively on Facebook. And then capping off the triple header, it's Pepperdine and Pacific on WatchStadium.com. Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Stadium, welcome to the game. How about John Elmore against Javon Jackson? Or maybe it'll be Keaton Wallace's night. Maybe it'll be C.J. Burks' night as well. Could be. Anderson, and that's, that's going to be a push off on Tolu Smith. Yeah, that was pretty obvious right there, right in front of Jeff Hart, just the official. So the eight threes already for Jackson. That's an arena record here at Diddle Arena. The most points ever scored by a UTSA roadrunner, Roderick Hall, dropped 52 back in 1997. Jackson with 37. Got 7.30 to go, and it's just a four-point game. That's deep for Wallace. Too strong. Allen tracks down the rebound and throws it off of Smith, and it's going to stay UTSA basketball. Heady play from Nick Allen. Yeah, you got to have guys like Nick Allen on your team because he does all those little things. He's not interested in the limelight or even a whole lot of shots or anything, but man, does he give up his body and his mind and soul for this team. Anderson almost got a piece of it. Wallace to Fronin has it swatted away by Charles Bassey. Fronin got away with one there, but you see the size starting to bother UTSA a little bit inside. Jackson sagging off, essentially fronting Bassey. He wants it, Allen's fronting him there. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would not play behind him because you give him a free catch, you're just going to be stuck in the basket. Dangerous entry pass, six on the shot clock. Watch the position, 23 and White's trying to get. High off the rim <laughs> and it falls through for Josh Anderson. That's a home rim. It's a one-point game now. To Nicolau. And Western Kentucky can take the lead. And you're happy when a guy that's not named Wallace or Jackson is taking a shot if you're Western Kentucky. Dinolo is ready to come down if that three had fallen for Omer. Yeah. But he's now one for six from three. Jackson, Jackson wants, wants it. it. Yep, and he's asking for it. And if I was them, I would give it to him. Five on the shot clock to Nicolau from the elbow. No. He's one for seven. 
And Western right. Kentucky's gonna force someone aside from yep. Javon Jackson to beat him down the stretch. Or Wallace. They're not letting either of those guys catch it. Has no oh, no. And Western Kentucky has the lead. And again, despite the performance of Jackson, it's the guys in white who have the lead right now. It's a tough place to win. It's an 8-0 run over the past 3-13 as Tolu Smith taking advantage of his size. It's exactly what we just talked about. You can't give Smith or Bassey a clean look in the post if you play behind them like Fronin was playing them just now. Make an easy entry pass, and you're not going to stop them. You're giving up too much size and too much skill, and you're letting them catch it way too close to the bucket. And the scoring drought is now 3-30. UTSA 0 for their last five. One for their last eight, and just not even letting Jackson touch the basketball. And yeah, and, and this is on display. Look at how far he is. He's out at the logo in the center court, and and Omer is still only about three feet away from him, and trying to stay between him and the basketball. And of course, you're going to get guarded like that when you're such a good scorer, and that's why some of those angles of screens is really bothering. Western Kentucky because those are almost like back screens, but the angle of it is more on the side, and it's rubbing those guys off and getting an easy shot. But what they're doing now is playing the other three guys in zone, so it's really kind of a triangle in two, and it's been effective. Here's our moment of the game. Shockingly, it's Javon Jackson, but his foot goes sideways on this three. Watch it again, we'll take a look at his feet from Javon Jackson. And he's trying to make sure this is a four point play. Had the presence of mind, Noah, to turn his foot on, I'm gonna say almost a 90 degree angle to avoid stepping on that line to get that extra point. That's court awareness personified. I've heard all good things about a rowdy crowd at EA Diddle. Yeah. And it's living up to that. We're on the hilltop above the Ben River in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And Western Kentucky has regained the lead by a point with 5.23 to go. They've certainly gotten their money's worth so far. So now you, you've been entertained. Now you're ready for the outcome to go your way to make it a great night. Could use but, something for Keaton Wallace. You saw his numbers struggling so far in the second half. There he is right on cue and they need it and they got it. We talked about this with Rick Stansberry at the shoot around. If you trap these guys, they are capable of hurting you in those corners when you try to go 1-3-1 one, one, because they stick their guards in the corner and those guys can cash it in as we saw Wallace right there. Again, playing behind, but that's okay because he made him catch it from 16 feet away. Get on the shot clock. Anderson, a few dribbles in. Penetrate, kick, Bearden, no. Anderson kept it alive. It'll go left to right with UTSA. Not a strength of this team catching and shooting on the perimeter. Lamonte Bearden had a good look, and he's a decent three-point shooter, but these not, they're not knockdown three-point shooters. So now we see a straight two-three once again. And they're staying big with Tolu Smith on the floor. Jackson, too strong. Allen fights for it. That's off his knee. Western Kentucky went down with five minutes to go, is one and eight on the season. And some of that is because they run out of gas. We talked about them getting more minutes from those bench guys. The feed for Bassey was a beautiful one from Bearden, and Bassey will go to the line. Lamonte Bearden needs to be on the floor at crunch time. He's got the energy and he certainly has the skill set. Look at him force the issue here, blowing right by Danikolau and delivering the package at the doorstep for Bassi. Daniel Allen, who's been active in the comments, we appreciate it. Said five minutes left. UTSA is ready to, to go on a 20 point run. That's They've done it before, they did it against Middle Tennessee State back on January 17th. Yeah. Down 15 with three minutes to go, lost by three. And of course, the wild one on Saturday trailed for all but 30 seconds of the game, down 17 with 3.30 to go, then the 22-6 run.
I believe Clark Kellogg, the great sports announcer, calls that spurtability. It's a word he made up. I think it's a real word now. <laughs> Four minutes to go. And off the leg of Anderson. And with 3.58 to go, we've reached our final media timeout of the evening at 70 to 69 with UTSA in front. It's been quite a game. Quite a game indeed. Of course, we talked about Western Kentucky fans getting their money's worth, but I've enjoyed this as well. This has been a great atmosphere here yeah. in, in Western Kentucky. I know Olivia, it's her first trip here also and certainly lived up to the billing for sure. Oh, definitely. This atmosphere is so electric. But, guys, we have some other people who are coming up with some more pictures on Instagram. Thank you, Taco Joe. He says, the she says, go runners. UTSA versus WKU. Remember, that is the hashtag. Keep them coming. Okay, more Roadrunner swag. And finally, a dog. Thank you very much. Okay, come and take it. That's from Mandy Allen. And then one more. Oh, okay, back to the Hilltoppers, but a very cute dog indeed. His name is Ozzy, and his owner's name is Matthew. So thank you so much. He says, no more looking back. Of course, as he is looking back, that's pretty funny. Well, we've got quite the game here, and any time you have a player that's making up half of the team's points, you've got to think they're the player of the game, right? Of course, that's Javon Jackson with 37, an arena record and his own personal best. So that's who could be the player of the game, win or lose, but we want to know who you think is the player of the game. So go ahead and comment on Facebook. Let's see it right now. Whatever team you're rooting for, who's the best player tonight? Guys, what do you think? Well, I think right now it would we would be Kevin Jackson, yeah. but there's, and it could be Charles Bassett, who's been outstanding, but we've got a lot of basketball to go with 3.58 to go. But how about our fan of the game? And I don't want Joey Claybrook getting jealous of how much fun this young fan is having with oh. Big Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Big Red, one of the great mascots in all of sports, not just college athletics. That kid's brave. I would be afraid of Big Red at that age. Wow. I would think that he would try to eat me up. Look at that giant mouth. I'm afraid of him as an adult. <laughs> well, that's weird <laughs> that you're afraid of Big Red as an adult. Six on the shot clock. Ball is going to stay with Jackson. The off-balance, Javon Jackson has 39. This is impressive. He's just a sophomore, ladies and gentlemen. The right back is Bearden and one. He'll have a shot to tie the ball game at the free throw line. A nice response by Lamonte Bearden. Le Beard, Lamonte Bearden has played his way into the starting lineup. And again, last five minutes, he's got to be on the floor if you're a Western Kentucky fan. I think you understand why. Does a lot of things good at both ends. And we're tied up. Wow. Chance for Western Kentucky to go in front. Eight on the shot clock, under three to go in the game. Bearden again the take. Nick Allen swats it away. Back comes Keaton Wallace. Wallace, a whole lot of contact, no whistle. I don't think you could hear a whistle if it did blow it with the way this crowd is going. Anderson, no. Bassey the rebound. Bassey's a beast, and he hits the deck. And he'll go to the free throw line. Once they scrape him up off the floor. Wow. <laughs> Lamonte Bearden again trying to make something happen. And a great no call, in my opinion, right there. And then back the other way, this action is fast and furious. Watch Josh Anderson again forcing the issue, but Bassey 
on the glass. We talked about this road trip right here probably being the toughest road trip in Conference USA, having to come to Western and then turn around and go to Marshall, or vice versa, go to Marshall. And then come down here. And you can see why. This is a distinct home court advantage. Looking for Wallace or Jackson in Western Kentucky knows it. Somebody else gotta get a bucket. To Nicolau, thought about it. Here's Jackson, the reverse. Oh! Javon Jackson oh. spins it in. What an exchange that was right there. And the patience to find him. There was guys passing up open shots or decent shots, but when they get it to the hands of a superstar, he delivers. Wow, what a performance. Javon Jackson has set the record for most points scored by an opponent here at Diddle Arena. He's got 42 on 15 of 27. And they have all been spectacular. Hollingsworth to Nicolau, took it away momentarily. Bearden, nice and block. it poked away. Bearden nearly saved the day when it was a sure run out for UTSA. Couldn't convert. De Nicolau has been ice cold and that's a good time to get warm. And who created that shot for him? Javon Jackson. All the attention he's getting from the defense gives it up to a wide open De Nicolau and he casts it in at a big moment. Making his 90th straight start to open up his career, the junior from Italy gives UTSA a four point lead. UTSA was just down five and now they're up four and they did that really quickly. A 6-0 run in the last 50 seconds. Again, we've talked about their ability to just explode at the most opportune times. You can see why the guard play is off the charts. Wallace, Jackson, Danikolau doesn't even get guarded half the time, and he can see how he can really hurt you. 42 for Jackson, 20 for Wallace. They've combined for 62 of the 78, and they lead by four. Special, special, special player right there. You can have exclusive access to the best matchups, stories, and features when you subscribe to Stadium Plus. Gain access to 500 premium events, including college football, basketball, baseball. Go to watchstadium.com backslash stadium dash plus backslash or just do this, trust me. Google Stadium Plus, click on the link, learn how to subscribe. Anthony, I'm with you. Jackson's a beast, and Terrence, you're right. Bassey is hooping all right. And I would imagine, Tim, that they try to go back to Bassey here. He's got 19 on six of six. Hard to do in the zone, but they're gonna try. But there's not a lot of passing angles right now. You see there's a body in front of him and behind him each time, wherever the ball is. Savage, no, Bassey, an offensive rebound, puts it right back up. He'll go to the line, and he has been taking a beating. Yeah, he's hurt, holding his hip there. But you see him cleaning the glass again. That's what Steve Henson talked about, Bassey hurting them, not so much on the first catch, because they're going to try to make, make him catch it far enough away. But he just cleans up the glass, and when he does get it there that close, you're either going to follow him or he's going to score. Did a nice job tipping it to himself there. He's seven of eight from the free throw line, short on the first. And that's big, too, because they are down four. He had a chance to cut this to two. And they, but more importantly, they need stops right now. They have shown an inability to stop Jackson the way he's been on fire, especially here down the stretch.
One of two for Bassey. Three-point lead as we approach the minute mark. Jackson telling DeNicolau to slow it down. Oh, and they throw it away! Randy Lee, the radio play-by-play -play guy for Western Kentucky, told me before the game, I don't know what you're going to expect. I've been watching this team all year, obviously. He said, well, they'll, you'll get 10 good minutes for sure and 10 bad minutes. I haven't really seen the 10 bad minutes tonight. They've been pretty consistent. It's just that UTSA has been a little bit better. We need a good 45 seconds here. They've got 13 on the shot clock. Looking for a shot. Bearded for the tie. It's short. And the whistle, and we're going the other way. The foul on the rebound. This place would have erupted if Lamonte Bearden was able to cash that one in. And he didn't want to shoot it either. No. He knew he was too deep. He didn't want to shoot it. But he it didn't look like anyone around the perimeter wanted to shoot it. They were daring him. He took the dare and didn't come up with what he wanted. Wallace misses the yeah. front end. That's a big miss right there. And if you're Western, knowing that three-point shot is not your game, go get a two. An air ball. That should stay Western Kentucky yeah, we're basketball. Gonna, we're going to look at this one on the video. I can almost guarantee it. Unless they got a piece of a fingertip. They're certainly going to look at it. The officials ruled that it was Western basketball. Let's take a look here. It went off of Hollingsworth. But the question is, is that inconclusive? Do you see, yeah, see a change in rotation on the basketball? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure that went off Hollings right. I, I don't think that's inconclusive at all. Again, the officials rule is a better angle right here. Hollingsworth, he, he tried to touch it, but I think he just missed it. He was awfully close to touching it. I think, I think that's going to stay with Western Kentucky. I do too. It's certainly from the angles that we have. And it's not like we're covering the Super Bowl where we have 37 cameras in here. Those are the angles we're going to get. There's no way that they can change this call, in my opinion. Just not enough evidence. Now think about the emotions, Tim, that UTSA, UTSA was coming off. That win against ODU, down 17, 3.30 to go. Steve Henson said, I'm not really sure what happened. It's like he was Will Ferrell during that biotechnology debate in old school. He's like, I just blacked out. <laughs> and now you come in here, and it's another emotional one down the stretch. That's, that's life in Division One basketball, especially when you get in conference. That's why even the best teams in the country, you think about Nevada and how much better they are than other teams in the Mountain West. They can't win every game in the Mountain West. You think about what Middle Tennessee State, Middle Tennessee did in this conference last year. They still couldn't win the last couple years, really. They couldn't win every conference game. It's just too hard. North Carolina, Duke, those teams that every year, Michigan State, you can't win every conference game. And a lot of times, you lose the teams that people think you shouldn't lose to. But these coaches understand each other. They know how to beat you. They think about beating you in the summertime when you're one of those teams. The summer, they're literally recruiting and they're scheming and plotting to beat you when they get to play you. Western Kentucky basketball. So four seconds separate shot clock, game clock, three-point game. What are you doing here? What I think they're going to do? What are you doing? I, well, I'm trying to hear you, man. It no, is no, loud no, no, there. no, no. I mean, what are you doing if you're Western Kentucky? <laughs> oh, going to read lips in there? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm <laughs> literally looking at you trying to hear you. This is crazy. But, yeah, I mean, again, I'm not going for a three unless it's wide open because you need you just need to run your offense. You don't need a three-point shot right here, and you don't have a lot of reliable guys to even take them. This is what you do. That's it. Perfect. No. Hollingsworth, the put back. And Western Kentucky calls time off the make with 15.1 to go. Tavion Hollingsworth going up top. And this is what you do. You throw it into Bassey, obviously. He can't cash it in. But look at the cleanup on aisle 11. That is a big-time putback and a big-time moment. You better box out. 
Tavion Hollingsworth. That was a great play, and, and look at the immediate timeout. And now they've cut it to one, and this is why you go for a two, because now, obviously, you have to foul, but even if they make both free throws, you put yourself in a position to tie or win the game, depending on how many free throws they make. Much higher percentage shot, I'll say that. <laughs> so the free throw shooting tonight for UTSA. They're five for eight. Jackson's four for five. Cronin one for two, Wallace 0 for one. Nobody else has taken a free throw. You want to try to get a deflection. You want to get one hard trap, maybe make them turn it over. And then they may have to call a timeout here. That is great defense. And they do call timeout right before the official gets the five. Coach Stansberry thinks they did get the five, but of course, the clock in his head is a little faster than the reality, right? That was, that was one of those WWE <laughs> almost get the three. Daniel Allen, you're right. What a game. Western Kentucky, six and two on their home floor. The preseason number one, they're only four and four in conference. And UTSA, with Old Dominion beating North Texas earlier this evening, UTSA can control first place in Conference USA. Yeah, there's a lot at stake here for both teams, really. And if you're Western, you're trying to salvage your season. They get it into Jackson. Right back oh, to Cronin, he threw it away! Ten wow. seconds to go. And Bearden is fouled! Oh, oh what goodness. a collapse from the Roadrunners! The Roadrunners collapse, indeed. They look more like Wiley Coyote on that play. That was ridiculous how careless they were with the basketball at the most crucial moment of the game. But give Western Kentucky a lot of credit for the defensive pressure they applied there. They made it tough. Because if you're UTSA, I mean, gosh, you wanna, you wanna make them foul you. Don't turn it over. Bearden with one more to tie it with 8.4 to go. A 69% free throw shooter. He's now one for two tonight. And we're tied with 8.4 to go. I don't know about you, Noah. I'm not rooting for a team, but I'd love to see a little overtime. I like this. This is fun. This is fun. Wow. We're going to get a great finish either way. Woo. UTSA uncharacteristically throws it away. Take a look at this, how careless they were. They get it to Jackson. And look at this pass. I mean, that is a a middle school gym class pass to no one at the most key moment. And Jackson's done a lot of good things right there, but that was a horrible turnover. I think Jackson thought that Fronin was going to be coming up a little bit further. Because Jackson stepped around to throw the pass, yep. but then Fronin stayed back. He did, but the pass had nothing on it, though. Yeah. But Fronin, you're right. Fronin was, his job was to step inbounds, and that's what he did. I think Jackson thought he was going to run through, and he'd give it to him on the fly, and he'd be able to run right through the defense. But a miscommunication, a miscue, and it may have cost him here. Let's see if they can make up for it. Here we go. Five seconds to Nicolau. Coast to coast. No. Ball loose, and we're going to overtime. How fitting. This ends the way it should with a, some bonus basketball. But Danikolaou had an excellent look. Scramble at the end. No chance. And now we're headed for extra play. Melody's relieved, rooting for Western Kentucky. And we've got five more minutes at least, at least. of basketball here in Bowling Green. Oh, man. How about that players to watch combination? 
Tavion Hollingsworth. Solid game until you look at the left and see what Javon Jackson has done. Look, he's taken 27 shots, but he's hit a good percentage of them. Yeah, making 15 for, four, 15 for 27, but Hollingsworth only eight points, but he did have that monster putback to make it a one-point game. The putback and, and Javon Jackson could have sealed the game if they would have taken care of the basketball. He had the most crucial turnover of the night. So he's done a lot of good things, but an unfortunate situation at the end. But this just shows you how tough it is to win on the road in conference. You got your best player going for a career night, and you're still here stuck in overtime. Just eight turnovers all night for UTSA, but that one at the end was costly. Matthew's going to make some popcorn. Matthew, hurry up. You don't want to miss any of it. <laughs> John Drummond, overtime, baby. I'm with you, John Drummond. I love it. Three zone now. Again, if you're a Western, you want to try to get it on the block to Bassey. They make it difficult with this zone. They got a guy in front of them and behind them almost every angle that you try to throw it in there. Savage. And Western Kentucky starts off overtime with the three. Savage was one for ten before that shot. But he shot that one as if he was ten for ten. Confidence. First overtime for both these teams this season. Jackson, a lot of contact, foul on the floor. That's one way to slow him down. <laughs> he even made that shot. Charles Bassey trying to step up. A nice little bump. Of course, sold nicely by Jackson with a little head throwback. Oh. Missed the front end. You know, they missed the front end earlier with Wallace, so both Wallace and Jackson, key free throw misses that kind of changes the complexion of the situation. Good to have you back, Matthew. <laughs> Go easy on the salt. This game is enough to raise your blood pressure. You don't need sodium. He's thinking the same thing. Four on the shot clock. Hollingsworth for three, way too strong. Great battle right there by Wallace to help Nick Allen keep Bassey off the glass right there. That was a, a sure stick back. Great Jackson. Help. Oh, what a man. move. I Splits the defenders. Help. I thought it was great help until he changed directions. Wow, that was terrific. Faith trying not to scream her head off. I'm trying not to break the microphone. Faith, I'm with you. What a shift in direction, though. Bassey kicked it back out. Ten on the shot clock. You gotta space the floor a little bit. Savage again. Oh, he's hot! for the foul. Well, take a look at the play prior, though. Great help to step up. But it doesn't matter because of the change of direction. But then Jared Savage, the junior from Bowling Green, Kentucky, transfer from Austin P. Two big shots here in overtime. And this time, Jackson hits the front end. Check that. It's a two-shot. Both teams in the double bonus. He's got 46, and we've got a two-point ball game. Man, 50 is not out of the question, is it? 2.45 to go in overtime. 
Cassie, right. quick catch. Oh. Again, Garrett Savage with another key play here in overtime. What a pass. Two, three zone now, but it's extended. Jackson splits again, the floater over Bassi, no. Anderson, the rebound. Man, he makes splitting defenders look so easy, though. Sliced right through them like a hot knife through butter. Couldn't convert. Tough to get it over Bassey. He's got 22 and 16, does the freshman. Again, I try to go in on that block once again. Anderson gets fouled by Wallace. And he'll shoot two. And despite the travails and tribulations that Western Kentucky has gone through tonight, and they have been up against it, here they are in the driver's seat in overtime, up four with two free throws with two minutes to go. Resilient. This is tournament atmosphere. Western Kentucky's largest lead was eight, with 7.35 in the first half. They now lead by six with two minutes to go in overtime. Key possession here. You don't want to get stopped. Wallace. Oh, come on. Keaton Wallace uses the glass to cut the lead in half. This team defies the probabilities. Again, they're amazing. I mean, they have to have a bucket here. Wallace throws up a three under duress. Somehow gets a delicate smooch off the glass. And again, you have to wonder if he called it. Second look, different angle. Really good defense. Still casts it in. Amazing. from Olivia if she can hear us. Olivia, can you hear us? I can, guys, but oh my gosh, people are coming down from their seats and trying to get as close to the court as possible. I think if Western can pull this off, we're going to have a storm in the court situation. This is electric. So I'm going to be ducking under the table if that well, happens. Do you think this is a storm the court no, situation? No, no. I hope I not. Yeah. I mean, Western Kentucky has a history not just in Conference USA, which is brief, but around the country. This is a nationally known program. I don't think a win <laughs> over but, UGSA at home should be a storm the court situation. Yeah, but you certainly want to be close to the action. Look at Javon Jackson and Keaton Wallace tonight. With 15 of 26 from three, they've combined for 69 of the team's 85. And they both hit. Bank shot threes without calling glass. Wow. Even if they did, you couldn't hear them. <laughs> you got that right. So now, Western not quite out of the woods. is certainly enough time. They better be careful with the basketball as UTSA is going to extend their pressure a little bit. And I'm with you, Anthony. I don't want this game to end either. Well, at some point. <laughs> Before our flights tomorrow up to Marshall. Savage for his third three Come of overtime. Come on. He goes glass. What are we watching here? I think there's angels in the outfield for both teams. Wallace, the answer. Bassey the rebound. Jared Savage has emerged as a player of the game potential if Western Kentucky wins this. Despite his poor shooting, he has delivered here in overtime three threes, including a smooch from straight on. Three on the shot clock. Savage, got to put it up. He got hit on the arm. He got away with it. Did Cronin, an offensive rebound. Wow. 
He got fouled out. Yep. Yep. Hollingsworth gets fouled, oh. and Jackson rolled his ankle. Oh, man. Jackson goes down, grabbing the left ankle. Steve hits the season just flat before his eyes. I think he's going to be okay. A valuable asset, asset indeed. We'll take a look. They're trying to do a giveaway, and then that ankle just kind of rolled. We've seen some deja vu here. We've seen guys roll their ankles on their own, on seemingly innocuous plays, and we've seen not one, not two, but three bank shots from three. The last one from straight on. Plus seven for Western Kentucky with 42 seconds left. Jackson. Off. And Savage was just that. Savage you got ripping now. it away from Cronin. Yeah. Got a foul, and that's what Jackson does. They let five seconds go off the clock, though. That was a you have to foul situation the second they missed that shot. You have to know that. Our play of the game with 28 seconds to go. So many candidates, but this one right here, Jared Savage with a kiss from straight on. A big shot, his third three in the overtime period. Probably sealing the deal for Western Kentucky. And who would have thought that about 15 minutes ago? The largest lead of the game, and it comes with 25 seconds left in overtime for Western Kentucky. Man, that's a grown man rebounding right there. Appropriately, it's Bassey who grabs the rebound. <laughs> for Bassey, rebound number 18 of the ball game. Carter Johnson, a friend of mine, just texted me a big time Western Kentucky fan. He said, Bassey is a monster. That's exactly what I was thinking. That was a monster rebound, and he has been a presence at both ends, especially here in overtime. For those tuning in who may have gone to the sports book, just when you thought plus six and a half was a good one, it's now plus 11 <laughs> for Western Kentucky. 10 seconds to go. Wallace gets fouled shooting the three. I have no more words for this game. I'm, I'm done. Take the rest of the night off. Yeah. Right? Brian, we appreciate you spending the night with us in the comments. Makes it a whole lot more fun when you're all involved. Debbie and John, you as well. And the first overtime game here in Ditto since 2016. How would you like to shoot 52% from three on the road and lose the game? And your best player goes for almost 50 points. Western Kentucky holds home court. 96-88 in overtime. Even in the loss, our Stadium Plus player of the game, Javon Jackson, with the career high 46 points on 16 of 31, 8 of 14 from three. Everything but the win. Obviously a terrific performance by an outstanding young man. Outstanding player. But some great lines on the Western Kentucky side. Charles Bassey, 22 and 18 on seven of eight shooting from the floor. Savage hit three threes in overtime. Yeah. Bearden in his first start in 10 games at 22 and seven assists. 19 for Josh Anderson. So a full team effort 
from Western Kentucky. When we all thought UTSA was gonna come away with the victory. Let's go over to Olivia. Hey coach, congratulations. You said you weren't relaxed at halftime. How do you feel now? But well, I feel better. Uh, what unbelievable performance by Jackson. Yeah. For us, Kenny to survive that was remarkable. I think he had, what, 46? Yeah. That's about as good as the individual shooting performance I've seen. Yeah. But to our guys' credit, uh, we got down, uh, found a way to get it in overtime, and found ways to make plays in. And that's what you've been talking so much about. No excuses, find a way to win. How did you guys take control of overtime? Well, I thought getting us back in the game, I thought we went big, helped us. Yeah. Um, Back in overtime, Jarrett, Jarrett came in, knocked down some threes, and Charles was, was big from that last five minutes of regulation, five minutes of overtime. Yeah, Savage, Bassey, Hollingsworth all gave you a chance to even get to overtime. What play sticks out to you to get to overtime? Well, I'd have to think about it right now. Okay. I know we had to make some to get into it. We got a big steal on that out under down one, right? Um, shooting two shots, we make one or two. Had a chance to win it, but we got into overtime, so that was huge. You all just beat the best team in the conference record-wise. What kind of confidence boost does that give your guys? Well, again, you just got to take them one at a time. They're a really good basketball team, and um, you got to win your home games. Uh, I mean, that was huge for us. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's get to some of our stars of the game. Guys, congratulations, Gerald Savage, Charles Bassey. I was just asking your coach what play sticks out to even get to overtime, as heated as those last couple minutes were. Does something stick out to you? I know you had a hand on some of them. Uh, I think in that five-second count down there, well, not the five-second count, but they called a timeout. I think that was big for us. They gave us some confidence. The crowd got into it. I think that was one of the plays. Let's go back to the final minutes of regulation. As heated as it got, and you were just going back and forth volleying points, what mentality shift did you go into? We just had to grind it out. We just down. We just had to get buckets, get stops, and that's what we did. Charles, you're battling it out under the basket. We saw you Saturday night doing it. Tonight, you leave with a win. What does it mean to beat this team? I mean, it's great because you understand. I went for them offensive rebounds, play hard, help my team. So, I mean, it was a good win tonight. We fought hard. We came back and we got the win. You took a beating tonight, too. How's your ankle? I mean, it's going to go. I mean, that's, that's, that's what we do. I mean, as a player, you're going to take a beat. So, you got to just come back and just get back stronger and just do everything you can to help the team win. Does it mean a lot to both of you to have beaten the best team in the conference? I mean, yeah, because I mean, coming to this game, we know we got to just play hard every time, go for the offensive rebounds, no second chance point, and just play hard every time. And just That's what we did, and we just got, we got the win. So that's great. And Jared, how do you build on this one? Oh, we just got to carry it over to Saturday. We want to pack diddle again. The crowd was great tonight. They helped us win tonight. So we need the crowd packed again, and we're going to do it again Saturday. Congrats, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, up next for Western Kentucky, Saturday against UTEP. My broadcast partners, Tim Scarborough and Olivia Decker. I'm Noah Kozlov saying good evening from Bowling Green, Kentucky. The final score, 96-88 Western Kentucky in overtime. For more live games, replays of classic games, and daily original studio programming, visit watchstadium.com or search stadium in your local channel guide. A night to remember at Western Kentucky.